Hey everybody, it's AJ Poited and Jace. How you doing, Jace? Morning, everybody. <laughs> what? What's uh? What's going on? It's been a really interesting week uh, this week. Um, a lot of ups and downs, actually. You know, Napa wants to say hi. Let me get Napa. Come here, Napa. Come here, Napa. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come say hi. He's not jumping up here. Hold on. Of course, on cue, he won't jump. Come on, Napa. Come here. Come here. Come here. So, Napa wants to say hi as well. <laughs> hey, Napa. <laughs> We're both rocking the scarves, but I think Napa's had it up of his now. <laughs> oh, crap. He just took it outside. <laughs> so, um, oh, it's too hot. It's, it's, what is it, November 29th, and it's 70 degrees here in Vegas. Yep, yep. Oh, uh, really cold, <laughs> cold other places. Kind of I wish there. it's cold here. It's over, you know, actually, it's over 70 here in Tampa. Is it? Yeah. Tampa. I might be down one scarf now. So, um, uh, you know, it just reminds me every year this year, I just traveled a bunch the last couple of weeks, and um, it reminds me about being a flight attendant and how much I loved it. I actually loved when I would go to, like, um, Chicago and the plane would have to be de-iced and it was freezing and even though it was warm in the plane you could just tell it was freezing out and it looked all gray. Was it just like more adventurous to have that or you know just more dramatic uh, change in environments? It was more adventurous and more dramatic. It was, it was all of that. I think it was the adventure though. I, I grew up in Florida so I never I've never lived where there's snow so it's all very new to me. So it is too funny. You gotta see this. Of course, he stops as soon as I put the camera on him. Let me let me pull this off of him. He's going crazy. Come here. All right. So, uh, but on the downside, I don't know if it's the seasons or the holidays or what. Uh, I had a great month, but also it's like this last week I've been really slow and down. I, I um. I got to see my mom. I made some really good money. I made some great business contacts. And then, but this week I just been like, meh. Mm -hmm. It's been really funny. But uh, what's been interesting with that is, you know, we talk about it's your ability to sell that makes all the difference in the world in your income. Yeah. I have things coming up I want to enroll people into, something that you and I are doing together. Um, a closing workshop, the, the funny farm that I'm doing. And then um, there's a, a private training I want to go to, and I want to get some other guys for men only, and I want to get some other guys to go to it as well because I think it could really be good for them and me. And if they go, it'll pay for my way to go. And that's really going to come down to my ability to have communication with them and inspire them to go. So when you yep. have your meh time, is it during a uh, – uh, Uptime or downtime? Oh, uh, it affects my uptime. I don't. Um, I don't. It's affecting your uptime. Yeah, I haven't been. Uh, I've been. To that, you know, you know me. I'm not always one to just assume things, and I'm a lot uh, less pushier than some other uh, coaches. And so when I hear "man," I'm like, okay, well, everybody has a mad day, you know, in mad times, and. Uh, the thing is, you know, can you have meh days and still be optimally uh, effective? No, it, it, this week it really rocked my effectiveness totally off, just mm -hmm. completely off. So what do you do? I, what do you do to get back on track when you're off? I'll let you know. I think I binge on ice cream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. I mean, you know, for myself. Um, Normally, I do pretty good at kind of picking myself up, or at least kind of managing the, you know, my down downtime and uptime. Um, I, I will tell you, like last week, I, I kind of had a hard time. I had had a bad hard day, and um, and I, I put it out on Facebook that I had a hard day, and you know, so, and sometimes on those days, it's like I, I was. It was one of those days where, man. I know I need some help. I don't even have the energy to ask for help. And so that's what I said. I said, uh, I need some help and I don't have any energy. Someone sent some good words to me. 
And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I got sworn by a lot and uh, by a lot of great messages. And the cool thing about that was, you know, it, I did the pre-work. In other words, I built up, you know, a safety net. So therefore, when I had those down days and I'm, you know, I mean, are you always going to have great days in the future? Not always, you know, and yet I already had a built in kind of safety net. And it was awesome to hear from a lot of people to uh, kind of pick me, you know, give me a quick pick me up. And, you know, quite frankly, rather quickly, I, I, I felt good about everything right away. Mm, that's awesome. You know, and so, yeah. you know, I'm not exactly sure what I'm saying in terms of coming up with a strategy, but um, what I like, you know, what I guess what I'm saying is you can also pre plan your motivation. <laughs> I think for me, part of what helped, like I did my speaker training Tuesday night and that got me moving and I felt great. And then, um, uh, I, you know, but I didn't go to a keto this week. And I think if I had of some things could have snapped. And I, I think it's, Putting that structure in place ahead of time is so effective. You know, like when I go to a keto, man, I always feel better. Uh, like I feel a million times better. And I missed it so much while I was out of town. And I had a chance to go and I skipped it. And I think part of what happened is, um, and this might sound goofy, but Halo 4 came out. <laughs> and so all during Thanksgiving, I played Halo 4 with my fiance's girls. And um, uh I think some of like my old addiction came back and my old feelings. I think I'm so anchored to that. I played that when I went through like a really rough time in my life. I was like addicted to Halo 3. So now, that, uh, so not only did you get on that binge, you also uh, brought back old trig old negative triggers with it too. I think so. Wow, I can totally hear that. Whatever you just did, that was wild sounding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and it came out of this ear, which was on that side of the screen. <laughs> it was like three. Here, wait, ready? <laughs> it was wild. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I think I, I think that's a totally totally big part of it. And when I play that, I can tell I've played too much when I start getting really mad at the other players for messing up. <laughs> <laughs> so at first, it's fun, and then by the end, it's don't freak out. And I'm like, all right enough so i turned it off i put it away i'm actually gonna put it at sarah's house so i have no access to it i think that was a i think that was a big part of it you know and then thanksgiving like i worked i had a crazy busy week the week before thanksgiving was a great week um uh i had a business thing here that just popped up i wrote a really good contract with this one-on-one -on -one client i'm so excited to work with uh and it was great for him and me what i put together i um i got a uh uh, I got a gig in Houston I went to and I spoke at. I wasn't supposed to sell there. And I just, by the grace of God, I just delivered excellent. And this guy and I just have a real simpatico. We're going to start working together. And he's like, listen, you did so well. Let's just give these guys the opportunity to buy your stuff. And we did like, there were 40 people in the room and 12 of them. So about 30% wanted my products. Awesome. So that was really cool. Yeah. And then, Flew to Orlando and I spoke at a group there and reunited with some old friends and um, did some good sales when I spoke there and uh, got to hang out with my mom and fix my mom's driveway. These roots were cracking it. My friend and I dug up all the roots and got to make that better for my mom. And so got to have Thanksgiving and stuff with her. Just really was great. Um, and then I got back and got to have Thanksgiving with my fiance and the girls and I like hung out all weekend and played Halo. So I think like this week rebooting, I was kind of like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. plus I'm starting to see, I really think when I eat a lot of sugar that my, I just get really lethargic and I ate a lot of sugar last week and this week. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I think that really does something to me and I had no coffee either. <laughs> what are you just drinking an empty cup there? Have well, no, coffee? I'm having coffee now. Let's oh, okay. Go back. <laughs> I have no coffee. No, I had no coffee. Oh, okay. I had no coffee. So, you know, uh, you know, a couple of things, you know, from it that uh, already, this, this is why I like this show and this is why I like talking to you. It's, uh, we start off with just whatever and then it's about pulling lessons from life. You know, uh, um, life already teaches us so much and it's, can we pull, pull the lessons from it? 
Um, you know, we talked about for feeling bad and already, you know, we, we got a plan of, well, what can you pre-plan? You know, for me, it was uh, uh, creating a pre-planned safety net, meaning I put in, um, you know, good friends, friendships and that I can call upon uh, to uh, do a quick pick up uh, when I needed it. Uh, you talked about Aikido and how, you know, you missed it for a while and then you came back and you missed it. I think that's a big thing to note, you know, that uh, there's certain things that should, quite frankly, be requirements in your life. You know, right now, Aikido uh, isn't a, a reward for you. In other words, it is a requirement for you. I, t I talk about in the seminars how sometimes, uh, you know, parents, the way they view their kids is, you know, spending time with their kids is a reward for a job well done. In other words, if I do good on this project, then I'll be able to spend some quality time with my kids or something like that. And I always say it's just the opposite. Kids are not the reward. They're the requirement for a job well done. In other words, if they brings you passion, brings you energy and joy, um, then that those are the ingredients for a good life. And so Aikido uh, should be, especially if you feel down, not like, especially if you don't feel like going, or you're too down to go. That's the absolute. That's the reason why you need to go. You know, I mean, when you're feeling up and great, you know, um, well, let you me still ask need you a question. Then let me ask you a question. In, in the moments when we don't feel like going, and, and that's like the exact thing we need to do, mm -hmm. how do you get yourself to go? And don't just say, I just go. I mean, unless that's really the answer. Like, how do you get yourself to go, really go? You know, I think it has, um, because, you know, with my martial arts, uh, I, I've definitely had those, those uh, types of feelings. Right now, I'm actually uh, getting back into doing my uh, Peaceful Warrior workout. It's a... It's just a simple five-minute workout routine I learned from Dan Millman. I love it. I teach at the seminars, and it's a good workout. And sometimes, again, you know, I don't always feel like doing it. That's the reason why I need to do it. And, um, you know, I think it really comes down for me, at least, having faith in the discipline. Mm -hmm. Faith in the discipline, because there's real. I mean, it really. I mean, ultimately, it is just going. But why just go? I just don't feel like it. But it's like you got to have, I almost have more faith in the discipline than I do my current feeling. Does that make sense? You have more faith in the discipline than you do in your current yeah, the feeling. Because, yes. I, I, I had, again, it's that pre thought. I, I pre think that there was going to be times when I don't want to do this. And now that I feel good, this is my reminder that even if I feel bad, I need to do it, and I need to believe that so much that even when that even when I feel bad, I'm going to believe this more. You know, so I, don't I, I just you know, that that, that might have a little bit to do with uh, faith too. You know, say that again. You know, uh, you know, quite often we talk about uh, faith and uh, you know uh, spiritual religious beliefs too. You know, it's that person who wants to do something they know they shouldn't be doing, and yet they have faith in, uh, you know, a higher power or something like, no, the higher power, that, you know, I'm not sure, but I know that the high road is a better road to take. You know what I just thought of is, um, why don't I just lay an anchor? Like, every time I make myself go, lay some anchor that's like you're here, you, like intentionally lay an anchor. So next time I'm sitting at home and I don't want to go, I fire off this anchor and, and then action. I take action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so you know, today you, our you, show to talk about breakdowns. You do a bow. Some other stuff. You do oh, a I'm bow. I'm sorry. We're, I was talking over you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You do a bow and stuff like that, you know, before and after every, uh, uh, as you walk into the dojo, right? Yes. Um, something like that, you know, could be just that anchor. Uh, how many times, and almost anchor every time you are, you have overcome that procrastination, you know, and and followed through. Because you know, though, it's like those strong disciplines, especially those long term disciplines, is where all the great rewards are. 
You know, when Aikido's shifted for me is I asked my sensei, what do I need to go from where I am to like, what do masters do or how do they do it differently? And he said, um, you have to come, you have to say what days you're going and stick to that schedule. And then you're there unless you're dying. You, you get there no matter what oh, yeah. it takes. And right after that, I pulled my calf and was, my leg was all big and black and blue. I pulled it at this workout. And, um, uh, but I kept going and I was there on one leg and I got like, huh, even just being here on one leg, I'm here and I don't have to do everything and it still works. Like a lot of the, I don't know, it was like I got this elevated view of it, like a lot of the perfectionism faded away, if that makes any sense. Yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. You know, I've seen uh, other martial artists, it's like that's what exactly what they do. They're there with, unless they're dying. I mean, if they're hurt, they're sick, then they're, they're sick. You know, they may not be fighting with everybody else or, or practicing with everybody else, but the main thing is, did you show up? Good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, that's and, all it's about, right? Yeah. And, and I've seen, you know, my, you know, my friend Ray and stuff, I mean, he'll go off on this big tour, you know, and get in like 30 minutes, his plane arrives 30 minutes before the class starts. And he, you know, it's, he, and he still goes to class. You know, because, still what? and he still goes to class, you know, even though there's been a long events, you know, you've been doing this for so long, it doesn't matter. You show up anyways. It's, you know, and it's just, have, you know, what, here, here's an interesting question for the audience here. What do you have disciplines for, you know, that no matter what, you're going to be doing this. And some, sometimes uh, it might be simple or it might be complex, but no matter what, the, these are the things you can count on yourself for. Not others can count on you, but you can depend on yourself to do something. Oh, that is a great question. Man, well, that's like, oh, I just felt that in my body. That is like a deep. Mm -hmm. Here's one thing I know. Wow. From an entertainment show, if it's a show or a seminar, um, unless literally I'm in the hospital, I'm showing up. Hey, hey, can, can, can I share a story with you? Yeah, of course. So. No, not <laughs> no. on the blog, not on this show. Yes, of course. Um, so when I, when I was in high school, you know, your identity, who you are in high school, uh, is all a teenager really has. And at, uh, 16, I was, um, uh, I was a school magician. You know, you got the jocks, you got the brainiacs, you got, you know, cheerleaders, you got whatever, what those sort of things. Well, as a magician, um, and I'll make this a long story short, I uh, I was doing a magic show in front of the entire school, and I screwed up. I screwed up, and uh, it was really bad. And you know, when a, you know, if a musician plays the wrong note, big deal. But if a magician screws up at a trick, that's a big deal. And so my, my whole world was just pulled out from underneath me. And I went on, a, I went on a tantrum trip. I mean, I, I blasted out of the room. I ran miles. I thrashed, I thrashed the room. I, I, hate, I hated things really bad. And, you know, I ended up uh, walking home. And, um, and I was thinking, you know, what's this thing called a GED? That's it. I'm quitting school. And I'm just not going to do anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And... Then, uh, but then I, before I went home, I looked at my watch and oh, there's a second show because we, you know, we perform for half half the school and we perform for the second half. So I go, I go do the second show. Second show goes fine, and, and you know I don't screw up. And then after that, I go, I walk home and I decide I'm quitting school. So I don't go to school for about a week. I haven't, I didn't, I didn't quit school yet. I didn't go to school for a week. Um, and then, you know, cause I was just sick to my stomach and then, uh, I went back to school and the music department teacher called me into his office and says, Hey, I want to let you know that I know what that meant to you. And I don't blame you for missing school this whole last week. I'm really glad that you're back. And mm. it's important that I tell you this, when it came time for the second show, I never questioned whether or not you were going to show up f uh, and do the second show. Because you're an entertainer, and that's what entertainers do. 
Mm. And that just stuck with me. I mean, here, here, here I am in a, in a place in my life mm. where I think the whole world has crashed. I want to quit everything. Quite frankly, I wanted to take my life at that time, you know. And in the midst of, boy, this is so horrible, I'm going to take my life. But, oh, wait, there's a show. <laughs> I got to go do the show first, <laughs> you know, before that, because the show always goes first. The show yeah. always goes on. And so, so I think that was like a big trying time in my life where I learned, you know, there's certain things that I could absolutely depend on. It's like so part of my nature to just follow through when it's showtime um, hmm. versus anything else. So anyways, I guess that's a good example of what we were talking about. What can you depend on yourself on doing? Man, I, that's such a great question, AJ. That is awesome. You know, um, I'd love to hear people's, uh, you know, if you're watching right now, I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Uh, please, you want to, do we, do they have a comment section on here? Or? Uh, we'll find a place for a comment section. <laughs> go to be a better, go to the be a better speaker group on Facebook and uh, I'll post this video in there. So this video will be in there. So uh, be a better speaker, uh, the group on Facebook, leave a comment. Let us know what you can depend on yourself for. And I had a thought while you were sharing this, AJ. Um, how could we turn prospecting into showtime? You know, because the show must go on. How could I make like that portion of my schedule the show? Yeah. Because, you know, when it's, you, when it's seminar time, although I will, I will tell you guys watching, uh, so a couple weeks ago, Man, I've been like this for the last couple months. I, I really think what's going on for me right now, too, I, I really think this is, um, like, if this is my comfort zone, and this is my comfort zone, here's me, I'm right about to come out, and I've been, like, resisting it, or my subconscious has been wanting to sabotage. Uh, I really think that's going on, because I, you know, I made a lot of money, and then for a few years just limped along, and now I'm starting to make a lot of money, and I'm, and I'm putting all the structures in place to really even more than make money, help a lot of people, but really break it out of where I was. And, I, and there's a part of me that wants to sabotage. So I was supposed to go to LA and then Portland. And uh, my fiance and I got into it at, like on Thursday night. And I'm supposed to leave on Friday and I didn't want to go. And thank God I had a structure like AJ because I'm like, I'm not going. F it all. I'm going to lose money on this trip and blah, blah, blah. And um, one half of the trip I made money, one half of the trip I lost money. But uh, AJ's like, <laughs> he goes, coach, 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 coach. And then AJ goes, the show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just what I needed to hear. It was perfect. Because I was like, all right, you're being a bitch, Joe. You're being a whiner, Jace. The show <laughs> must go on. And, uh, oh, I messed up the other night. I dropped the F-bomb while I was speaking. <laughs> Well, you know what I was doing is I was teaching this stuff about breaking out of our subconscious. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was, you know, when, when you reprogram <laughs> yeah. the subconscious, you have to work with the exact words the subconscious said. And, and, and I was saying, so one of the things that I do a lot is, ah, I'm going to go F it up. And when I give myself that permission, then I usually go rock it. And I take all the, you know, I'm so afraid of screwing it up that I don't do these different things in my life. And, um, Oh yeah. So I I I I dropped the F bomb and, and I, I didn't even think about it. And I only had four people in the room, but one of them wrote me on Facebook later and she was so nice and gracious about it. She was so wonderful. But I was like, crap, I can't do that anymore. I mean, this isn't I'm not an Anthony Robbins seminar speaker, you know, like he drops cuss words and stuff during his seminar, but he has an intention and a structure to it and that's wasn't the thing that i was doing am i making any sense or am i just yeah. rambling here <laughs> yeah absolutely so hey so, uh, so, go ahead. so i just want to wrap that other story so back to you so aj so i really think and i was talking about this the other night if we're going to climb mount everest and like here's the bottom and here's the top too many people mount everest make it weight loss or speaking career or uh, a business whatever it is i see this a lot with people doing network marketing or real estate investing or whatever entrepreneurial new endeavor they're going to take on, they start climbing, which is better than nothing. But they put all the structures in place for the climb after they start the climb. And in the middle is when they get tired and they get worn out and they realize they need a guide and they don't have the right equipment. 
if you're going to climb Mount Everest, the buy, time to buy everything is, is before you start the climb. Really, the time to buy it is way over here. Um, you hire the guide so he tells you what kind of clothes to buy, what kind of equipment. You hire your Sherpas. You hire a support team. You put all the structures in place. You work out. You train so that when it comes time to climb, you're ready and you're prepared. And um, so that's why. I'm, so like this call, you know, like what, what's one of the things I do? This call gets me out of it because I love doing this, like doing this with you. Um, speaking Tuesday night, I'm going to make sure I do a keto tomorrow no matter what. I've got a men's group tonight. I've got all these different structures around me. And um, I think one of the things, what? I just, I really like hearing that from you because I remember before you were so resistant to structure, you know, because you wanted to, it was like, at a drop of a hat, you wanted to go, you know, there might be a better party somewhere. And so you just want to be able to have the freedom to do that. So you just don't plan anything. No, no structure, no thing, because something might come along and I might want to do that instead. And now you're like really appreciating the structures because it actually more structure gives you more freedom, actually. You know? The biggest epiphany. You're going to freak when you hear this. Are you ready for this? Okay. I, what time are we in the video? We should mark this. Ready? I no longer want and to get involved with anything that promises get rich quick or get rich fast. I don't even want lose weight fast. I don't want any quick anything anymore. Even though I think a life could change in a weekend, I, I think it's the ongoing part. What I got was anything that's lasting takes a long time time it takes a while to train and get there mm -hmm. i'm like i don't want to do any trainings that's not going to be at least six months in nature that doesn't mean like we're in it for six months but that means like there's an ongoing relationship for six months and i want to just put perspective for you know for some of the people listening here um i think that's a wonderful awesome place for you to be where you are right now um, yes for for uh, some others i think they need massive exposure to what's possible out there and uh, to give a nuance about what you said, a life could be changed in a weekend. You're like, like really fast. However, for it to last, it needs continual, continual support and backup to it. Yeah. You know, yes. so, so you're, you're up. Some people just get that, the, 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 the weekend, but with no follow up. So what you're interested in is weekends with follow up. If there's no follow up, you're not interested in the weekend. Yes. The, yeah. you know, Sarah's been going through that. She, my fiance is going through tons of seminars. Yeah. And she tells me all the time, like, the seminars are great, but what's made the biggest difference is she gets to talk to me between them and hang out. And we, yeah. you know, we deconstruct it and stuff. So, and I also mean, part of what I mean by that is, it, it's more my mindset is, I'm in it for at least six months or a year, whatever new thing I want to take on. You know, I'm not just going to do it. So uh, I think part of what's triggered this for me is, you know, we're talking about plans. When I went to Europe back when I was in my early 20s, every time I booked a youth hostel for the night, um, like every time I pre-booked a room, I'd get to a town and I'd meet these cool people and they're like, ah, you're so awesome. Come stay with us. We have a free house. They're like, we have this mansion or whatever. And I'm like, all my stuff's at the youth hostel. So every time I didn't book a youth hostel, I wouldn't meet anybody and, or sometime. I don't know. But I, I just... I got to the point I was like, ah, oh, it's too painful to book a place and commit because you get better offers. So I was so afraid of that. In comparison to now, I just started up. I didn't mention this when I was in Orlando. I just started a new program of Landmark called the Team Management Leadership Program. It's a one-year program. It's a full year. And as a part of this program, we have five weekends over the course of a year. Every three months, there's a weekend. So there's one to start it, three months, one, three months, three months, three months. So there's five over the course of a year. And uh, there's even a team two, which is another year that I'm already considering doing. And then um, there's uh, classrooms every month that we don't have a weekend. And then there's team meetings and there's calls every week and all this stuff. And I used to be like, oh, I don't want to be a part of all that crap. But now I'm like, it, it occurs to me like a river. And if I jump in the river, all this structure will help carry me, you know, will help me get to my destination. As long as I just keep showing up and I'm willing, then that's the key for me is keep showing up and be willing. It'll carry me. You know, it's like you go to a keto, you don't want to practice, but you're there. And you, once you're there, you're there, you know. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. I, I just, now I, 
am so grateful and I relish the structure because now it's like, ah, oh, <laughs> look at how many people care about me. Look how many people want to keep me going. Look at how many people want me to stay on track. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I'm sharing all this stuff that's broken down for me. Here's something I want to throw on the table. We don't have to discuss it now. But I have had at least three different people call me about doing hypnosis, and I have blown all the deals. And I don't know if it's because I, I, I keep wanting to sell them into a bigger package because I know what they need or at least, what, at least what I think they need. Instead of just doing hypnosis for this little thing, I'm like, let's just take the time and knock out this huge thing. They, meanwhile, they get no hypnosis from me, and I get no income from them. And it's kind of pissing me off because it could have been thousands of dollars in income by now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's be- because what they think they need and what you know they need could be two different things. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you say, wow, let's, let's just do this. This is a better choice. You're right. It probably is a better choice, um, and yet it's not – what they're wanting right now. In other words, that's something, what you want is something that you, that's, that's going to have to be built too. Does that make sense? Um, so, so, uh, um, I, I was thinking today while driving, um, you know, someone was telling me about their seminar they did and just, they were just give me this big opulent type of uh, seminar, you know, how they greet their guests with their nameplates on a silver tray and, you know, this, this great, this, these opulence where you, then they take them through this big walk and stuff. And, and I was thinking, well, you know, some people are into that to me, just tell me where to go and tell me where to be. I don't need all that fancy stuff because it doesn't impress me. And, um, and so them trying, you know, them saying, hey, this is a better environment for you. It's more luxurious. This is going to be, you know, this is abundance. This is what you should be. It's like, no, it's not what I want. And uh, even though it, the reality is it could actually be better for me. And I'm kind of thinking this is what might be going on for you. Whereas um, you can see the ultimate plan to, you know, give them exactly, uh, create the change that they're asking for. And yet, um, they're asking for steps one and two, and you want to give. Can you see it? Huh? You know, they're asking for like steps one and two, and and you and you want to give them steps one through ten. That makes I sense. See that? And so yeah, you totally. know, it's like so yeah. th- That's where we have to kind of. Um, that's where we kind of have to know. Okay, I'll give you steps one and two. And in my mind, I know that after one and two, they're definitely going to want three, four, and five. You know? Can you hear that in the background? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody sounds unhappy. Yeah, Mike. I don't know. Yeah, I'm getting that uh, little leg in the video. Hopefully it doesn't uh, show up on the recording. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you don't Small commitments lead to big commitments, and it's just a part of the process. Ah, and, and, and yet, your your the most obvious stuff sometimes is hidden. Yeah, the the thing is, based off of your experience and my experience, our small steps are huge steps to everybody else. You're like, oh look, just knock it out in a day. A day? I was thinking more like an hour session. You know, that's like eight. That's like eight times more than I thought it was going to be. You know. <laughs> And so, yeah. That's funny. There's so many times. Yeah, that's, you know that's, what? I, I, I only want to work with, like, highly enlightened people, and I only want to do the big stuff. And and um, that's what has kept me from, you know, that was one of my stumbling blocks in the past that kept me only de- not getting any new clients because I can only work with experienced clients. <laughs> There's a long delay, huh? Yeah, super long delay. <laughs> oh, well. I guess I'm seeing your mouth move and not just listening to what <laughs> you were saying. I I have no idea how that's going to show up on the video when there's like this delay in the internet, but the recording will. We'll see how what happens. You know, I saw someone did a podcast. Um, what's her name? Felicity. 
This girl has a, a YouTube channel that I'm really digging. Let me mention this thing. I love, love, love what they're doing. Actually, they, I watched the funniest internet TV show last night. Have you seen the pl- pl- proliferation? No. Did I say that right? Proliferation? Oh, no. Have you seen the abundance of new internet-based TV shows? What? Uh, you, you got choppy, so I don't know what you said. Oh. Uh, there's all these internet-based TV shows now, and they're yeah. just really great. And um, so this, there's a channel on YouTube called Geek and Sundry. Um, and whoa, sorry, let me. Can you hear that or no? Sorry, sorry. Not really. So I'm looking at their page right now. They have 387,000 subscribers, 29 million video views. That's not bad, huh? <laughs> yeah. But what they are is they're a whole internet-based like um, TV station, and they have different internet-based TV shows that show on it, and it's really great. It's and it's it's the production values on the shows are well done. You know, like when they show the credits, it's not like filmed by Bob, written by, by Bob, starring Bob and Sue. It's like a whole credits you'd see in a TV show or in a movie. Uh, but they have a new show called Space Janitors, and it's like two guys that are janitors on Death Star. You know, they don't call it that for copyright, but it's hysterical. <laughs> Through the windows, you can see a big space battle going on, and these guys are, like, mopping the floor. <laughs> I, anyway, it was just thinking about the mundane. But anyway, this woman, Felicity, has a vlog on there, like Felicity's blog. And, um, you know, two days ago she posted. She has 78,000 views. But she also did a chat like we're doing with – it was her and three other women – and they just chatted, but they used Google uh, Google Hangout, and I think yeah. they just screen capped that. It came up pretty well, yeah. so we ought to try that. Yeah. And the reason I'm mentioning Felicity's thing is, I just think it's cool to study these and uh, give shout outs and and to see what other people are doing that work so well. I had lunch yesterday with a guy named Sean, uh-huh. who had Think International, and we chatted for a while. And uh, tell me about his channel. Mm-hmm. So. Um... I posted on Facebook that I'm um, doing a show and uh, could look for some guests. So um, after this after this show, um, on our next few shows, you want to invite a invite some guests in there into the conversation? Yes, let's talk about them on camera. Yeah. <laughs> let's evaluate them now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. And uh you know, that's one of the things I'm, uh, that Sean was telling me that he did is, is he's had some really big, like he does makeup tutorial videos, and one of the people he works with is, is really, really well known, and it's, he called the Oprah effect. Like they'd have him on the show, or they'd mention his blog, and his hits would go through the roof. So awesome. one of the things I was asking him was, I have these different things I want to promote, and like I've got my Christian-based speaker training, my For Everybody speaker training, my um, personal blog and then other stuff. And like, do I put this all in one place? Do I put it separately? And he was saying, set up different channels for each thing. And, and this is the big aha uh-huh that I got. And I was thinking your YouTube channel is just a place people go to and they see all these videos you've posted and that's it, right? So it really wouldn't matter. They'd find what they want to watch. But what he said that really stuck with me was your YouTube channel is a channel and the viewers at home will subscribe and they'll watch it like a channel. So it's like if we like the show The Office, we're going to tune in whenever The Office is on or go to Hulu and watch The Office, right? But if, if The Office starts doing something that's not about The Office, like they start showing dog shows and calling it The Office, I might unsubscribe and not keep watching it because that doesn't interest me. Um, so what he was saying was you've got to think about your channel and your audience watching it like an actual TV show and build out videos and shows that pertain to that. Yeah. I was thinking, um, what is, you know, this is the third show that we did. And so what is our show about? You know, we started off with, I don't know what it's going to be. Let's just start recording and find out and see if it reveals itself. And uh, what I'm really getting is that what we're doing is we're pulling out lessons from life. You know, we're not necessarily like planning out, okay, here's a lesson, here's a lesson. Now let's go teach them something. No, we're going... Our format is let's talk about life first and then see what can we learn from it. Yes. You know, it, it hasn't been, well, here are the lessons this week and then what can, and then 
let's uh, find some relatable stories to illustrate that. We're, we're, we're doing it just kind of like the opposite, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. we, and we, the format of the show can really continue on with just, you know, opening up USA Today. Let's see some articles where your thoughts, you know, let's pull some lessons from life out of that. Let's pull some lessons, you know, let's talk to other people about their experience of, uh, of their expertise and let's pull, pull out lessons from it. Yeah, I like that. And I think part of what we could do too is, um, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, I was talk- I believe for anyone to have massive success, they've got to master fear, they've got to learn how to sell and communicate, and they've got to shift their subconscious programming. And I was thinking, you know, if I spoke to a room of 100 people, and they all came to my seminar, maybe, you know, let's say half of them actually do that, and they have ultra success. So I was thinking, you know, maybe not all of them will do it. But I was thinking, Everyone who's had ultra success, 100% of them have done it in some form. Like I, I was just thinking about that. Everyone that's really gone big in anything has learned to get through fear. They've shifted their subconscious beliefs about themselves, and they're very influential. They know how to communicate and sell. You know what I mean? I don't know anyone that's very successful that hasn't done that. So it'd be, what would be cool is to interview people about like what they do or how they do it but then also to get into their personal development lessons they've gone through. That actually that would be really interesting for me to hear like what they've the behind the scenes stuff that made a big difference in their life. Very cool. Well, well let's do that. I'm <laughs> down with it. I like that. So hey, um uh, I, I think I'd like to make this sh- show a little bit shorter than normal and just start to wrap this up a little bit. Um, see if there's just anything else you want to talk about before uh, we wrap up today's show. Uh, I do want to just kind of mention, and I, I don't know exactly why I'm mentioning this, but uh, I guess it's just a tribute. Uh, uh, yesterday, Zig Ziglar passed away, and uh, he's, you know, he's legend and grand, you know, grandfather of personal development and motivation for many, many generations, and, uh, uh, you know, he, he was a big splash in this, uh, in the, in this pond called life that, uh, sent many, many ripple effects all, all over, and, um, you know, I've, I've gotten the great opportunity to meet him a few times, and it, it's just really awesome. He is just the most gracious person off stage as he is on stage, just the most likable person in the world. Um, I got a chance to tell him that, uh, you know, growing up, my dad didn't play music in the car. He played Zig Ziglar. And so while other people might have heard rock and roll music on the on their drive, uh, I knew every word to Zig Ziglar <laughs> speeches growing up like uh, rock and roll. So anyways, I just wanted to uh, give a tribute mention to Zig Ziglar there. Mm, and, um, that's nice, AJ. And uh, you and I've got something uh, cool coming up in December. You're going to be doing a, going to be doing a f- two, four, and five days, depending on how involved people want to be in some yeah. uh, some uh, speaker train, uh, sp- just speaker training, or basically anybody who needs to sell their s- product or service and they want to use it through the routes of of uh, selling to the masses uh, instead of selling one on one on one. Would you say that would be pretty accurate for that? Um, I think this training is really effective for, I think it's for anyone who's in direct sales, whether it's one-on-one or one-to-many, mm-hmm. uh, cause the presentation skills are the same either way, you yeah. know, you, yeah. so, so I think, it, I think it really fits for both. You know, it's, it's speaker training is the context, but even when you're selling one-on-one, you've got to have, st- so the, the first two days, December 11th and 12th is called the funny farm. And we teach you how to be dynamic and authentic on stage, but also how to write stories that sell. So even if it's a one-on-one presentation, it's it's stories that sell one-on-one. Yeah, I, still, I think I have the video of of the presentation about what it's all about still. So um, if look below for a com uh, for a link mm-hmm. <laughs> somewhere that uh, may have a a link to that video, so you can find out all more about that. Uh, uh, funny Farm event because whether or not you go to the Funny Farm, this, this presentation, you're going to learn a lot and you're, you're going to also find out why it's important for everyone to uh, learn to be more charismatic by going to the Funny Farm too. Yeah, J- AJ and I did the, uh, a, a video and you know, usually you want about 45 minutes and then you're closed, so about an hour you know, on a webinar and I think we did three uh, hours. An hour and- 
<laughs> no, our, our first run was three hours. It's like, okay, we got to re-record this. <laughs> it can't go three hours. Yeah, so there's a lot of content. It's a lot of teaching. It's actually really, really good content by itself. Um, and it's fairly entertaining. It's funny. So, um, yeah. And then the second two days is marketing. It's, uh, and the context of it is being in demand. It's also positioning as the go-to expert. And, and where that comes from is I had a meeting about a year and a half ago when a, uh, uh, one of my former clients had set me up with someone for a meeting. And this person I was going to meet Googled me. And she watched my videos and checked out my internet stuff. And it was like she knew me, trusted me, and loved me before I walked in the door. And uh, what we want to do is set up structures. I mean, imagine your next me business meeting. If you walked in the door and they already knew you, trusted you, and loved you. Imagine if you went to speak and they'd already seen your videos. And, and instead of having to go through gaining all that rapport and trust on stage, it was already there. How much better and easier would your speaking be? So we're going to go through that. And then on the 15th, um, really excited, is an optional day. AJ has, how, when's the last time you taught this? Uh, I've been doing this on a one on one basis with personal clients, uh, which, uh, you know, normally costs a whole lot of money. <laughs> and yet, uh, in a group workshop format, I, I haven't done it uh, in a while. So, yeah, so AJ's doing a, uh, what do you charge for the one on ones? Five, 10,000? Yeah. Five to ten grand, uh, a closing workshop, like how to put together your presentation so that it closes, and that's really it's, effective. It's, you know, b scripting it. You know, scripting, scripting, scripting your, scripting your presentation. Yes, you must script your presentation, and, and man, it's so good. It, it's that's either for a, a one on a one on one thing. You got to be scripted, or like a one to many presentation. And are you going to give them your templates and your outlines and all that? Yep. Yep, we're they're going to get my templates, my outlines. Uh, we'll do a lot of examples, and we'll actually write for your particular products and services there. So, uh, so it'll be a. It's definitely a workshop. It's not a lecture where you go learn and then you try to apply at home. We'll we'll look to have uh, uh, most of it finished and done and accomplished by the uh, the end of the workshop. How many people total? Mm, probably no more than five. Got, five. Yeah. Five, five max. Cool. Uh, otherwise, gonna, it, otherwise, I have to change the format because there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention to it. Yeah, that's true. AJ's helped me redo mine, and it's killer. It's worked way better. Awesome. Man, I really enjoy doing these. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. For All right, bud. Uh, we'll catch you later, and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Right, bye, everybody. Love All you right. guys. Take care, everybody. Bye. You, killer. Bye. <laughs>